Welcome to Bruins Overtime, live presented by buyatoyota.com. For offers not seen on TV, visit buyatoyota.com. Sophia, Billy, and Razor here with you, breaking down this 4-3 shootout loss by the Boston Bruins to the Seattle Kraken, your favorite, the shootout. <laughs> you love it, Billy. You must be happy in these We're last couple days. It's another unbelievable. <laughs> Razor's trying to stay awake, and I'm eating chocolate. <laughs> it's very it's healthy. Stress eating. You're stress <laughs> eating. It's not it's oh. stress eating. I'm just, Gosh. just need something to do. Yeah. Watching the shootout. Ay, ay, ay. Yeah, so the Bruins Six losing in a shootout, guys. And over their last six games, a 2-0-4 record. All of them, as if you tune in for pregame, you knew there were five straight decided in either OT or shootout. Now make it six straight. The last time Boston played five past regulation was in 1932. We're in six now. The, you know, the real story is, a, why are they getting to the shootout? But I know we're going to get to that. I don't know. Here's the shootout. Uh, Yamamoto, Frick said, hadn't played much. Washington State made him. Makes a beautiful play here. Goes to the forehand as he leans to the left and shoots back to the right. Gets Olmark going a bit. And then Pasternak here, Razor at the end. Yeah, he tries to kind of take the same angle, do the same thing, go low glove as the righty. Uh, not enough angle or too much straight on angle. Angle, doesn't get Grubauer off of that short side post and it's 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 a shootout right it's another one but but six in a row um, just uh, it, it's really quite incredible again. I mean that's yeah. the thing it's how it's why well, they're at least having they came to go back from giving up the lead this time it wasn't the six on five goal so at least that we have something it's, it, it's in between now now it's it's just, it, it was a different way to do it I'll give them that <laughs> it was doodling. literally a different way to do it. he's doodling he's, way to he's do just it. like yeah 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 <laughs> <laughs> he's doodling squares it's something. just it's amazing how different of a vibe there is around this team now compared to and I understand the ebbs and flows of the season I get it real well but go, going to the All-Star CBA break, how different of a feel. There was. The confidence level, yeah. the overt confidence level that we saw and felt from this team. How how uh, energetic they played, how fun they were to, you know, they had playing. It's just a different, it's it's work now. It didn't feel like that before. Season's hard. Yeah. Season's hard, and you're playing a team that needs to win these games in Seattle. They, if they lose, they're out of the playoffs, so they need to play. Like, there's, I get there's it, but variables to that. The, you know, it, it is work. You're right. Yeah. It is work for this but team. But they're not helping themselves. They're not in those third periods. Turnovers and stuff. They, oh, yeah, it's they a can different play. feel. They can, they can play certain ways. Razor, you made the point of at least, you know, the Bruins did come back to tie it to get to OT instead of just dwindle away after uh, Seattle made it 3-2. And here's that tying goal. That's it. Power play. Again, we've been, you know, we harped on the power play scoring big goals. So we have to give them a lot of credit for scoring big goals. They had one opportunity just, and, and it was at the end of the game where they really needed it. And they got it from from, from Charlie Coyle being in front of the net. They moved the puck around, and they did a great job. Pavel Zaka retrieving puck on this goal and the second goal. You'll see a stick right there. It goes down below the blocker of Philip Grubauer, goaltender of Seattle, and a uh, big power play goal for, for the Boston Bruins to tie them up. Yeah, a couple hats went on the ice because uh, originally thought it was David Pasternak, but more Charlie Coyle. More than a couple. Yeah, yeah, you're <laughs> right. They had to get a couple. There a, was a, a bag. lot there. Uh, Charlie Coyle with, the 20, with his 21st of the season, tying a career high in goals for him there. Meanwhile, let's look at the go ahead goal by the Seattle Kraken. All, Oliver Bjorkstrand getting it in his 14th of the season. Yeah, this isn't a high flying, high scoring club, but, you know, he's done well for them. Strip of the puck after Grizzlick tries to lock it out, doesn't get it all the way out. You can see the Bruins never really get set. Bjorkstrand goes right to the front of the net, and it's Morgan with the hammer. I mean, really, you know, strides right into it beautifully. Schwartz, who had been involved all game, is going to back up, and then you're going to get right there. Bjorkstrand's going to strip, gets down the wall, and then watch. Bjork, Morgan's going to come in. Boom. I mean, literally strides into it. Really good tip. That's a heavy shot and a really good tip. But the Bruins, even though, you know, here in slow-mo, they get numbers back. They don't they don't pick up the stick of, of Bjorkstrand. In there. He had six, seven shots in this game. He was he was good for them. Well, he is with that goal and his shots. He is our Subaru star of the game and at home this season in 28 games. He's got nine goals, 13 assists, and four power play goals. All right. Well, something we were scratching our heads at, but the NHL or the, the league, the refs, excuse me, called it a no goal by Morgan Geeky after he got a penalty, scored against his former team, 
you guys thought it was okay, right? Yeah, this is a tough one for me. I, uh, Bruins do a great job again. Special teams, they do a great job killing. Morgan Geeky comes out of the box, and it's a great pass from Trent Frederick that springs Geeky. I mean, I've seen that. And the only thing that I, I, I really want to hear what the what the what the referees or whoever it's, it's a situation the, situ room. the situation yeah. room decision is the only thing is that Geeky goes down on his own. That can be the only thing that makes sense is that Geeky goes down on his own as he's going towards Grubauer right there, and he's the one who slides in on his own. Now. I mean, I've seen it a million times. I thought the puck was on a stick the whole time, but as long that that challenge went on and on and on, I was like, oh boy, the longer that went, because I thought it was a good goal right away, just like Brick and Jack and everyone else. But um, and what the league is saying, it's what you're saying is, it, it, well, it's kind of Morgan Geeky impaired Philip Grubauer's ability to play his position in the crease prior to the puck entering the net because he slid into him. Yep. However, you know we're looking at it and things happen in the play so I hate the call mm -hmm. I hate it mm -hmm. because like it's it's not like he's going in there intention he's going there with momentum of going in again we're finding ways to take away goals right. in our game whether it's a, a one inch offside yeah or this fine you want these rules in the game fine I think it screws up the opportunity to promote the game I mean this wasn't like a guy was intentionally running the goaltender no. mm -hmm. he was coming and making a play and but th that's the way the league wants it called so that's why they call it look I give I'll tell you what I'll give the Seattle video guy a lot of credit yeah. because I'm looking at it saying what are you doing yeah yeah this don't is a that. bad call you're gonna put your team short-handed here the guy or the girl I don't know had the had the, the, the guts to do it yeah. and made that call and it worked out for them. They they know it better than, than I do, you know. It did work out. Goal was taken back, obviously, but uh, Morgan Geek obviously looking to score against his former team. Couldn't get it done. David Pasternak, though, two goals for him in this one, in the first and in the... Yeah, he gets a breakaway here. He takes off. He absolutely sniffs it out. Great quick uh, pass up from Shattenkirk. Beautiful. I mean, right on tape. Clearly on side. And here is the control of David Pasternak. He can slow the game down in this instant. You know, this, this isn't lackadaisical here. This is a change of pace. He gets the goaltender thinking, and he just absolutely beats it. This time, unlike the short, uh, the shootout, he elevates the puck more. And the the ability to change speeds compared to the shootout in the game is, is really the difference there. And this was just another great play. Charlie McAvoy with a great pitch, and there it is. Pavel Zak again retrieving it, getting underneath the Seattle defense and finding David Pasternak bolting into the front of the night. I'm sure David was calling for it, a little backhand around the tape, and Bruins look good there. Yeah, so heading into this one, he hadn't gotten a, a goal in two games, and two in this one, and give him 700 career points, 700 and 700, and one and two, actually, with that assist, but there you go. So fourth fastest on the Bruins to reach that milestones. We've got a lot more to come on Bruins Overtime Live. We're going to get more reaction to this shootout loss, including from Jim Montgomery. He goes one-on-one -on -one with Brick next. Bruins Overtime Live on Nesson is presented by buyatoyota.com. For offers not seen on TV, visit buyatoyota.com.